One of the reasons I often cite as being a reason to switch from Windows or Mac over to Linux is the fact that Linux is stability. Linux is the most stable operating system I've ever used, and it's certainly more stable than something like Microsoft Windows. And when I talk about stability, I'm really talking about stability as far as the fundamental operating system. Now, where things start to fall apart a little bit is when we talk about the programs that run on the operating systems. And I have to admit that when we talk about the programs that run on Linux, we do have a stability problem. And mainly we have a stability problem because of the way we manage packages on Linux. We get these updates, right? Any kind of security update, you get a new version of a program pushed to you on most Linux distributions. On many Linux distributions, you get a new update every time there's a new release. We call these rolling release distributions. And these distributions, they do have a stability problem because, trust me, I get it. I deal with it all the time. Programs get an update and they either no longer work, they're completely broken, or they don't work the same way they did in the previous version. Speaking a little bit about some recent personal frustrations that I had to deal with this past Saturday, uh, two days ago, I actually came up here to the office and I was going to make a video. I was making the last HDT video. I recorded it that morning. I got here around uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and it takes me about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half if I'm planned out and you know to actually record the video. Then it takes me a couple of hours to edit the video. So I was probably done with the recording and the editing by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then I have to render the video. And Caden Live had just had an update on Arco Linux, which is based on Arch Linux. So anybody running an Arch-based system, of course, you've got a new version of Caden Live. And every time Caden Live updates, it seems like half the time it breaks on me. Things don't work. Some of the imports that I try to bring into a project from past projects that I've saved, they no longer work because you have to use the old version to actually use those files instead of the new version. In this case, the problem I had was Caden Live would not render my video in 1080p 60 frames a second. I didn't know that because the settings, or my settings always say 1080p 60 frames per second in Caden Live. That's just the default. So I finished all of my edits, you know, recording, editing, and everything takes about four hours. And then I go to render the video. The video is about a 25 minute video, that edition of Hey DT, which on my equipment, I got a pretty beefy CPU, takes Caden Live about 35 minutes to render that video. I waited the 35 minutes, I go to watch the video, and it looks like it was rendered as 140p. <laughs> it's nowhere near 1080p. It's all pixelated, gigantic pixelated. It's unwatchable. And I have no idea what the hell happened. I thought it was just a glitch. Now, I went and checked my Caden Live settings and everything said 1080p, 60 frames a second. So I thought something weird happened. Let me re-render the video. Just maybe it was just a one-time glitch. So I waited 35 minutes again for the whole video to render. A second 35 minute period of me just sitting there, it renders and it's the same problem. It's like a 140p video, gigantic pixelation, not right at all. So now what do I do? Well, I could just re edit my video in a different video editor, but you know, then I'd have to go through the editing process again, which the editing process takes, you know, a couple of hours. I might have to spend two hours to re edit the video in a different editor just to render it in a new editor. It's like I didn't want to do that. So I kept trying this Caden Live thing. So I tried the flat pack. So I installed the latest Caden Live as a flat pack, which allowed me to import my already saved edits and everything. So I didn't have to re-edit the video. And then I rendered my video using the flat pack version of Caden Live. It was the same problem. So it's some kind of dependency with Caden Live, which I don't get. I'm assuming it's like a FFmpeg thing. FFmpeg had an update probably also, and the new version of Caden Live and the new version of FFmpeg, there's something screwy with it. But using the Flatpak version, I thought would solve the problem because I thought the point of these containers like Snaps, Flatpaks, and App Images is that all the dependencies were there. But obviously not because there's something really, really wrong with Caden Live on my machine as of right now. But I've had this exact same problem happen actually before. I remember about a year ago, I had this exact same problem and it actually forced me to explore some other video editors at the time because Caden Live just wouldn't work for me. And at the time, 
I discovered Blender as far as using Blender as a video editor, which is not what most people use Blender as, but I did edit about two weeks worth of videos using Blender about a year ago, and it worked rather well. The only problem with Blender is rendering the finished products is slow. It's It takes twice as long to render a video in Blender than it does in Kaden Live. But other than that, the editing process itself is actually rather enjoyable. So what I had to do on Saturday was to go back, edit that Hate E.T. episode a second time in Blender, which again takes a couple of hours to actually go through and clip everything and edit everything, annotate the questions and all. Then I rendered it in Blender, which again, Blender takes twice as long as Cajun Live to render my videos. So instead of waiting 35 minutes, I waited an hour and six minutes for the video to render. So I got to the office at like nine o'clock that morning and you guys probably noticed I posted that video at 8 p.m. that evening. I was here for 11 hours for a video that seriously, I probably shot in under an hour. And the, the shooting and the editing all together, I probably spent two and a half to three hours on. I was here for 11 hours, all because instability in my applications. Now, of course, I'm beating up a little bit on Caden Live here because Caden Live is a program that often has these updates that kind of break things for me. I've had this happen many times in the past with Caden Live. It's almost to the point now every time I get a Caden Live update, I kind of expect it to break. But it's just not a Caden Live problem. I've had updates that didn't go right for things like OBS, uh, which is a program I use on a daily basis to actually record my videos. Cute Browser, I've had an update with it one time that was a little screwy. I had an update to Qtile one time that was a major uh, problem. Uh, about a year ago, Qtile pushed out an update that actually was broken. You know, you couldn't even log into the window manager. Everything was just wrong right it was just it was just a really really bad update and the problem was i think like one line of code some something that got left in a file somewhere that didn't need to be there and they corrected it within a day the qtile folks pushed out another update and everything was fine but if that would have been the only window manager i had installed on my machine i couldn't actually log in and use that window manager right i would have to install a different window manager maybe one that i wasn't used to using maybe one that i didn't even have a config file for and again that's time lost right because now i'm i'm having to to deal with this stuff that i really didn't need to deal with right if things just worked i could actually sit down at my computer and actually get work done and I know a lot of non-Linux users, you know, Windows and Mac users especially, often say that Linux is not a stable operating system. And they do have a point. I, again, I admit it. You know, I often say Linux is stable, and I do think the fundamental operating system, good news slash Linux, is rock-solid stable because you don't have to worry about, like, a operating system update, like Windows updates itself and breaks itself all the time, right? That doesn't happen on Linux. But the programs themselves, your actual applications, I think is the frustrating part and the part that we have to admit as a community could be better from a stability point of view. So is there a solution to this problem? Yes, there is. I, I, I know the solution to the problem because I've actually done this in the past before starting this YouTube channel. The distributions that I typically ran on my computers were Ubuntu LTS, and Debian Stable. Ubuntu LTS is based on Debian Stable, so they're both Debian Stable distributions, right? And Debian is one of those distributions that does not update applications, uh, at least not your standard user applications. When you install Debian, a new release of Debian only comes out every I don't know, three or four years, right? So it's a long time in between new versions of Debian, but once you install that version of Debian, your user applications, they're never updated. The only thing that gets updated is things that are important for security updates. So if your Linux kernel needs a security patch, they'll push that out to you. But other than that, you're not getting an update to Caden Live or GIMP or Blender or OBS or your web browser or your office suite and things like that. That's not happening on Debian Stable. And when you're not updating packages, obviously they never break on you. That's why things don't break on Windows. It's not because Windows is 
fundamentally more stable as far as the applications that run on it. It's just the way people do things on Windows is you go and get an executable off the internet, you install it on your Windows machine, you never update that package, right? <laughs> Once you install it, you're never updating it because Windows doesn't automatically update things for you. And so, of course, it's not going to break. As long as it was working when you installed it, nothing's ever going to change, so it should always be working. And that's kind of what Debian Stable is. Now, unfortunately, because I do this YouTube channel, I take a look at so many different pieces of software, and I need the latest software when I'm taking these looks at, at these programs on the channel. I, I need to be on a rolling release distribution. That's why I run Arch Linux or Arch Linux based distributions like Arco Linux on my main production machine. So I, I kind of have to be there. And because of that, I have to deal with the frustrations. Yes, occasionally I have these programs I rely on that break, but it would also be frustrating if I was trying to look at certain applications on Debian because Debian has such old packages. These newer programs that I want to take a look at on the channel, for example, I couldn't install from the Debian repositories because they don't exist there yet. <laughs> so, you know, I would be trading one group of frustrations for a different group of frustrations. But if you demand stability in an application, and if you want your applications never to break because of updates, or especially the newer to Linux users, I would strongly recommend using Debian Stable or a distribution based on Debian Stable. And the new user-friendly ones would be Ubuntu LTS, MX Linux, Linux Mint. I would take a look at all three of those distributions because I think those are going to be your best bets as far as rock solid stable. So I know this video is a bit of a rant. It's mainly just me venting frustration about the problems I had this past weekend because when I came up here on Saturday to record that video that should have taken me about three hours and I was here for 12 hours from the time I woke up that morning to the time I went to bed, you know, was dealing with Basically, a program that had a bad update. Now, that, that one program having a bad update cost me a whole day, and I, I get it, right? I understand when you people vent on the internet, trust me, I feel your frustrations, but at the same time, I do think GNU slash Linux is the best operating system on the planet, and I'm going to keep promoting it, and those of you that are using it, I hope that things work out better for you than they've worked out for me in the past week. All right, guys. Peace.